calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Tanya Fisser Live is proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, Seeds of Success. Gardena, passion every season. And TanyaFisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Let's get into growing your own. Now, where to start? Number one is, that's the question that most of you ask. And this is how it works. You've normally watched like a really cool cooking program. And in fact, one of the first people that made it really cool to grow your own was who? Come on, tell me. Let's see. Let's see if anybody of you can get it. Who was the first chef? And I'm talking back in the days when we probably had like 15 channels. Yeah, were well, some of you alive then? Well, you might have just been born. But anyway, uh, we had, there was a, a really awesome chef and, and he kind of showed us what it was to grow your own. Come on, I'm waiting. Wendy, you should get this one. Wendy Greathead Moulton, you should know the answer to this. If you don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you. And it actually started with a lady chef, but she was, she was a bit um, kind of porn star. Could I say that? Here she was. Who was she? Nigella. Ah, oh, Nigella. Yes, she would arrive in her night. <laughs> she would be with her dressing gown on, you know, it, and she'd go up to the fridge and open the fridge and the light would ooze out of the fridge and she'd grab that chocolate eclair with a bit of mint on top of it and she would, she would eat a chocolate eclair like, yeah, like that. I know you're thinking it but um, I'm not saying it. But anyway, she made it really cool. Very interestingly enough, when she was on TV, the viewership of men whew, skyrocketed. <laughs> but <laughs> the other cool dude is Jamie Oliver. Um, Jamie really got down to basics and, and he showed us and he showed all those wannabe chefs out there and home cooks that we can grow our own. And, um, and that has just carried on and on. And then to catapult us into the next reality, which is where we are now, was COVID. And we say that there have been some silver linings. And for me as a gardener and for somebody that wants to inspire you, to be brave enough and to give it a bash, um, I'm, I'm grateful for what it's done to a lot of you because I saw the shelves at garden centers being emptied at a rate of knots. I saw people like buying toilet paper, like they were buying seeds. They're like, I gotta have this, I gotta have that, I gotta have this. And most of you didn't know what you were buying, but you knew you needed something because you were gonna have to feed your family. The hunter-gatherer instinct kicked in, human instinct, and it is the human instinct which we need to remember because that's what awakened in you, you know, not like, uh, uh, like, oh, um, everything's told me to, social media's told me to, no, it was the hunter-gatherer in you that actually woke up and said, I've got to provide for my family and I've got to do this well. So. Keep that feeling, you know, keep that feeling. Get your bone arrow out, whatever you need. Run around the garden, play some drums, but keep it going uh, because there is nothing more satisfying than growing your own. Most importantly, the reason why I say grow your own is because you know. You know what is in it. Um, you know what it's been treated with. You know how much you've spoken to it, how much you've cared for it, how many times you've sworn at lovely Lily Lettuce because she's not growing quick enough. 
Um, amazingly, vibrations and people's vibrations and words have an effect on plants. And if you don't believe me, uh, find a book called, I've got to whisper this, Mace. Come here so I can whisper it. It's called The Sex Life of Plants. True story. Read the book. It's fantastic. Better than Fifty Shades of Grey, I guarantee you, but it'll teach you a lot about plants that you don't know. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about vegetables today. Oh, my word, I'm getting lost. Um, guys, what are the things that go wrong? Before I get to that, I want to say hello to a few of you out there. So let's see who's on there. Jonathan's there. Good morning. Crawly Things, you're back. Crawly Things, what's your real name? I think, did, if your mother called you that. I'm a bit worried. Her and I'll have to have a chat. But other than, hello, crawly things. Um, Jerry, the monkeys are a problem unless you go to the expense of building a monkey-proof enclosure. Yep, you're right on the money. And uh, depending on how far you're going to go and how intense you're going you're gonna to embrace this, those are the options. That's what you've got to decide. Um, we have the same problem with monkeys. Um, yeah, it, it's there. They're going to be there. They're not going to go away. All right, so we've literally got to work around it. Um, Josic, um, Lowry, no dinner beats eating from your own homegrown veggies. I rock you on that and I salute you, sir. Jamie Olive, oh, a lot of you had it. Catherine, you had it. Beryl, Alida, you had it. Um, Josic also had it. Oh, guys. Oh, you listen, I think I have a man crush on, on, on Jamie. I really do. Anyway, I did go and try and look for his restaurant in Storkham, but I couldn't, couldn't get to meet him. But one day, that would be like top of my list. If you had to say, Tanya, what would it be? Um, it would be going to a live concert by Andrea Bocelli. Um, oh, yeah, I know. You've all just gone weak. And have you seen his son sing? Oh! Go and Google it. Go go on YouTube. It'll literally give you gooseies. And to meet Jamie Oliver. Yeah, I did stalk him at the Chelsea Flower Show, like all day. Um, <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, it's lovely to see you all here. Lexi from Port Chepston. Caroline Crook says, I am nuts. Well, my mother used to tell me that too. Um, and so and I take after my granny and definitely my father's blood. And if any of you know my family, you would know that there is a little mentalness somewhere in this realm of our genetic pool. Um, right, guys, let's get on to the things that go wrong. I'm going to give you some of the don'ts, okay? So first of all, when you're thinking of doing this thing called gardening, this is how it normally goes. Um, you're on the, the patio, you've got your cup of coffee, your better half is standing next to you, and this is how the conversation goes. Morning, doll. Yeah, morning, morning, babe. How's it going? Yeah, no, it's okay. You know, I watch this great program, this great gardening program. It, and I read this really good magazine called The Gardener. And they told me that I'm a start a veggie garden. So I was thinking of just getting in like, like a whole lot of people and calling all our mates and we're going to just trash this whole back garden. We're going to trash it and then we're going to make vegetable beds and we're going to become subsistence farmers. True story. You go overboard. You bite off more than you can chew. Remember, the biggest, biggest lesson in all sorts of gardening is that you eat the elephant in bite-sized chunks. So start off small. That's lesson number one. Start off small. The next lesson is whatever you do, grow what you're going to eat. And it sounds, it sounds silly. But, I mean, one of the most popular things, and if you have to go back in, in recipes for kids or getting kids started in veggies, they tell them to sow radish. My word. Have you ever given a child a radish to eat? Can you see what's going to go on? It's going to be... It's going to be disaster. The child is going to be ruined for life. It's going to have to go to therapy for another 10 years. So don't sow the stuff or grow the stuff that you don't eat. True story. Because a lot of you buy all these seeds, you pick up, you pick up things and you're like, yeah, no, this, this looks cool. This, I'm, I'm going to grow this. But you have no idea what it is. So grow the stuff that you enjoy. Okay. Number three or four, whatever it is, is it needs sun. Normally an east-west is really good for a position, per position. But what you're mostly wanting is a five hours of sunlight. Okay. Five hours of sunlight. Whether that sunlight's in the early morning or late afternoon, that is what you need. So if you're ticking those boxes, okay, then you're on the road. You, you're there. 
you are so there. The next thing is, is think about space. And Mace, come across here with me. I want to show you this here. Look at this guy over here. Because one of the biggest excuses I have, and I hear this all the time, is that I don't have enough space to grow vegetables. Well, that is just bollocks. Absolute bollocks. Because this is a little veggie planter. You get two or three in a little packet, I think. Um, and what you can do is you grow your veggies right in here. So we've got a mixture. We've got some mustard. We've got some beautiful butter lettuce. Isn't it yummy? We've got some little pansies which are all edible. So this you can have on your patio. You know, if you're a balcony gardener, if you don't have that much space, well, this is it. This is how you grow it. Right here, nice and easy. And remember, when one thing goes over, you simply just take it out and pop in the next, guys. Nice, nice and simple. So think about space. That's always, always important. Beds, the heart of your beds, guys, and the depth. Of your beds this is where things go wrong this is where I see people crawling on all fours to try and get to the spinach that's deep in the garden bed try and minimize your depth of your garden beds to no more than a meter no more than a meter because you want to be able to reach in and get it I've seen veggie beds that are like deep if you're gonna get inside there you're gonna squash everything along the way Okay, so, so keep them narrow. The other thing is consider raised beds. And, and this is not just for us grain tigers here. You know this part here. No, it's not just for grain tigers. This is just for ease of use. And you know, if we make things simple and we make it easier for us, we tend to spend more time doing it, which is why any type of raised veggie garden works. Whether it's growing in a wheelbarrow, whether you're growing in an old tub that you found, um, but something just to lift it off the ground so that you're not having to bend your back to get in there, um, you find you'll probably enjoy it a whole lot more. Um, and the other thing which I failed to mention is where you are putting the veggie garden. There's a saying, and it is so true for veggie gardening, it is out of sight, out of mind. Now, traditionally, when we were going to plan our veggie garden, you go to the older homes. Like, and I'm talking in the 70s. Where's the veggie garden? Down there! The other end of the garden, next to the compost heap. Hi, boy. Who's going to go down there in the middle of the night to go and pick a lettuce for salad? Nobody. You're going to be too scared. You're going to need a GPS tracker attached to you and blue security at your side with a taser gun in case you get robbed or mugged along the way down there. So you place it as close to your home, your kitchen, wherever you've got those other things that we spoke about, the sun. Yes, yes, you got that. Yes. Wherever you've got those conditions, don't place it down there because you're going to plant it. You'll forget about watering it. You'll get there and lily lettuce would have bolted into the sky and all your hard work goes to waste. Okay, so don't go to the other end of the garden. Keep it up close. And the other thing, guys, is be brave. Mix them up. For people that have got small gardens, and I'm talking like complex gardens where you've literally got a bed, a bed, and a bed, um, take it one step further. Bring the dazzlers, the dancers, onto the dance floor. Okay? Not only out there. Bring them right onto the dance floor. And what I mean by that, a lot of gardens have got this rectangular piece of lawn, Garden bed, garden bed, garden bed. You know that kind of garden. Yes. Okay. So just, just amuse me and send me some pictures. Dig a little bit of a patch of the lawn out. Put some pavers down or a bit of gravel. Put some pots and grow some sexy, gorgeous veg. And in that, you mix your flowers. And even in the garden beds, you're going to plant your veggies. I mean, look at this beautiful guy here. Look at this. Oh, I mean, I just want to squeeze it. Mace, look at this beautiful. Mason's our cameraman. I'm not talking to you, by the way. But Mason's our cameraman. Come in here close, Mace. And he's got his mask on. This is a beautiful butter lettuce. I mean, don't you just want to dive into it? Um, we were doing, and this, my, my friends, is what you can incorporate into your garden. Um, there are a couple of other things that I want to show you, which not necessarily veg, but take a look of here, beautiful basil. This is one of the purple basils. It's a perennial. 
edible just for that little puff, that little pow of colour. And so plant them in amongst. One of the best things to plant with your perennials, so that's in your garden beds, is spinach bright lights. So that's the spinach with the green stems, the red stems, uh, they've got orange stems as well. You plant those in and you pick from the outside. So you're not going to be picking all of them at once, like going and chopping its head off. No, you're going to be picking just a few leaves around. A few leaves around, the more you pick, the more they grow. Okay, so that just adds a new dimension and a new diversity into what we traditionally know as veggie gardens. And, and that whole traditional thing about where veggie gardens should be that oh you've got to have a veggie garden you know guys that was back in the day when van riebeck arrived here and he had so much space he decided on the east wing we're going to have the rose garden on the west wing we're going to have the pet cemetery and over here we're going to have the orchard and over there we're going to have the vegetable garden we don't have those luxuries anymore um, we don't have that kind of space so we use what we can we even grow them in beautiful window boxes like this. Come in here, Mason, have a look at this. Show the folks this, because I love this thing. Um, look here, it's got a little, little like dipstick there, so it tells you if it's got enough water or not. I'm gonna turn it around there. See, there's the minimum, there's the maximum. Um, we've had these growing in here probably for about two months. Beautiful basil, lovely stevia, and awesome thyme, okay. Right, guys, so, Sorry, Mace. Um, okay, so guys, we've got the basics. Let's see what's going on here. Who else is here? Um, Yvonne is here. Good morning. Um, you love Jamie's Italian cooking. Yeah, boy, yes. Um, uh, Sue, you've also got a crush. <laughs> um, Lexi, so miss this when I'm teaching. Glad I have some holiday time to, to watch you. Lexi, if you're a teacher, um, I am so proud of you, and guys, you have, you are rock stars. The conditions that teachers are, are, are putting themselves through and to, to teach our youngsters out there, um, sure, I salute you. Um, Tracy Lee says, I've planted baby spinach in amongst my other plants in my garden beds. I live in a complex with a really small garden. Yes! That's the one. And the baby spinach, one of the nicest baby spinaches to use is this one over here. It's called Dash, um, Dash baby spinach. This is the baby spinach that you buy at that shop in the packet with the W. You all buy it. I know you do. You should stop doing that. You should be growing your own. And this stuff comes up like hair on a dog's back really easily. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So let's do this as an example. So. Guys, what I'm going to do is, oh, look, I want to show you this. Come, 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 come look here. So this is my little balcony box, okay? Um, there's some goodies that you just can't do without in, in your garden. And um, watch here. One, two, three, and ta -da! Look at that beautiful little balcony planter. What have I got in it? Now that I'm throwing everything around, guys, I've got my secateur. Okay. I've got a fork. I've got a little spade and I've got a brush. Okay, but most importantly, let me show you how this all works. Um, so we want to do some basic seed sowing right now. And to get started on that, what I want is to get one of these. Okay, so can you see what this is here? Um, these are the little fiber pots. Okay, so a fiber pot, and I'm going to show this to you because if you're starting out, it works really, really easily. What it is, is basically cardboard that's been taken, it's been squashed to form a mold, and it forms this little compostable pot. Now, many of you, many, many, many of you have bought a tray of seedlings, and let's just use this here. Many of you have bought a tray of seedlings. This is beautiful Swiss chard, which we actually call spinach. It's actually Swiss chard. You take the little baby out, Okay, take them out, and then you find that by the time you've planted it, you've actually lost half the soil. It's been manhandled a bit. You pop it in, and what happens? It just, it like falls over, okay? It falls over, literally. So one way of avoiding that is to do the following. Sow your seeds directly in here. 
um, the part from when you've sown seeds, whether you're going to sow them in situ or whether you're going to put them into little pots um, like we've done here. Um, so come and have a look. So this is in our little propagator. So we've got seeds that we've sown in here. We've got, this is a little lettuce, lettuce mix. Um, we've got a, another lettuce mix here. And here we've got a few little spinach that we've popped in. We pop them inside the propagator because what it does, especially now during the cold, it makes things speed up. Gives them the warmth that they need. Okay, so if you're going to sow in there, what I would suggest, once those little guys have germinated, you can then transplant them into here or you sow directly in here. Okay, so how do we do that? Let me show you, nice and easy. Um, so come along here, and guys, this is how it works. So we've got one times pot, put that over here. I've got one times, do -do 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 -do. This is my coconut husk, okay, my palm peat. It's actually called palm peat, but it's coconut husk, believe it or not. It used to be that size. Add a bit of water. Look how, look how it expands, does the job, and this is the stuff that you are going to use to sow your seeds in. Trust me, if you do this, you'll be a rock star. Your seeds will germinate, and life will be okay. Um, you know, a very interesting thing about seeds is that um, none of us ever read the instructions. Hmm. True story. We don't. We're like, yo, oh, no, okay, tear it open and off you go. Folks, you've got to, got to read the instructions because believe it or not, they do help us along. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of this. Isn't that amazing? It just breaks off like that. It just breaks off. It's soft. It's friable. Um, and then I'm just going to add a bit of this, okay, add a bit of that into my little pot, firm it down just a bit, okay. Okay, it, it's easy. This is like one, two, three. Easy. All right. I'm going to open up my dash spinach. All right. And what I'm going to do in here, and use this as a note. If you have got larger seed, so you see this seed is quite large. All right. You could put at least three in one little pot. And the reason why you're going to do that is as follows. If you put three little guys in, you've got three chances, okay, that things are going to happen. Okay, so we're going to just pop it in. One, two, three. I could even go one step further and I could put a fourth one in. So let's say, let's say that they all germinate. What do we do? What I like doing is, is I like removing the two that are the weaklings. You always get that. Okay, survival of the fittest in my garden. So those that are weaker, as they started germinating, you get rid of those. So that you've now chosen the strongest, okay? Because we want the guy that's going to give us the most leaves. So do exactly that. And then what do we do? We've now got to cover it. Larger seed needs to be covered. We take a bit of our coconut, our palm peat, cover it just a little bit. Remember, it's called seed sowing, not seed bearing, okay? We're not digging six-foot holes as to, to try and germinate these guys. So a little bit in there. So it was about two or three mils. And then firm it down okay this part do you see this part where i'm doing this it's probably the most important part that you are going to be doing this because when the seed gets in contact with the palm peat um, from the top from the bottom something happens in the seed it's a it's a biological reaction that happens that says wake up wake up we add a bit of water and bob's your uncle all right very importantly with all of these when you are sowing seed is that your initial water must be really really good so give it a good good soaking make sure that the water pours through the base and then you will only need to water so if you've got it in a, in a germinating tray folks you're not going to have to water because the germinating tray just holds it especially if you've got those two little guys closed at the top but if you've got it in a well-lit spot, so for germination, we need lots of light, not directly harsh, harsh sun. Then you're going to have to water a bit more often. And the, the, the pot will actually tell you. Have I got a bit of water here? Let's just have a look here. Where's some water? Uh, here we go, there we go, there we go. No, 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 no. Help me out here, guys. I need some water. Oh, I have got some water. Um, so let's just take this little watering can. 
So what I want to show you here is when you're going to water, okay, I want you to give it a good watering. And what you're going to see is, if I give it a few seconds, okay, you see there? See, water pouring out the base. We know we've given it a good enough water, all right? And then this actually starts changing color. You can actually see it already. Your, your little pot starts changing color and it starts um, sucking up some of the water and then you know that you've given it a really, really good watering. So the trick with sowing seeds is don't let them dry out, please. Um, don't let them dry out. So probably a watering every day, um, early in the morning before you shoot off to work and then within 10 to 12 days, sometimes 15 days, depending on how cold it is, these little guys are going to germinate. What is important, guys, is the following. Make notes, all right? Make notes. Say that you sowed it on this day. Take a little book. You sowed it on this day. Um, remember your labels as well. Folks, please remember your labels. Um, it's very, very important. I'm just going to pop this little guy into the germinating chamber here. Um, I need to still put a label on it because so often, so often you sow things and if you haven't put the name tag on it, yeah, I know, you forget, you forget what it is. And especially <clears throat> if you're sowing herbs and some other strange things, you don't know if you bought that or if you sowed that herb when it starts growing. You don't know if you, um, if you bought that for your rheumatism or if you can eat it or you're meant to use it as a rub or if you're meant to put it as eardrops or for your uh, whatever those things are called. So it's really important that you make notes. Keep as many notes as possible. How many days did it take to germinate? When were the first leaves through? Um, how much sun was it getting? And if you do that, guys, you learn from them and you become better at it. Okay, um, so I want to come back to my little balcony planter. Look how new, new it is. Okay, so this is my balcony box. What you do is, it makes life so simple. When you've made a terrible mess like I have, you take the top of it and it becomes a little scoppy. What's the English word? Um, what's the English word? A dustpan. The English word is a dustpan. So, but scoppy sounds better. Um, that's what you're going to do when you're going to kick someone. That's a scop. That's a kick, yes. Okay, but never mind. Um, so you can use it as a little dustpan. Um, you can get rid of all the bits and pieces and your tools go in here. And for me, this is an absolute winner. The guys from Gardena are coming out with some really cool things, guys, uh, with a little bypass secateur, nice sharp nose, and um, works really nicely. There are a couple of things that work particularly well. And I'm going to say this, and I might get beaten. But I'm going to say it in any case. When you're buying secateurs, folks, buy something that you know is going to last. You're going to say, well, Tanya, how do you know that? Well, you pay for what you get. Okay, so if you're going to buy a pair of secateurs that's on special for $49.99 or $29.99, I guess you know how long it's going to work. Probably three or four cuts in the garden. The spring is going to shoot out and go to your neighbor. <laughs> True story. <laughs> And then you can't get parts for it. I was at a mate's house last weekend. He pulls out all these secateurs. Hey, T, I'm looking for some springs for these. I'm like, dude, you're not going to find these springs. These things were imported like on a one-off. And you're never going to find a spring for this. So like, throw them away. So buy something that you know you can get parts for, that you know have got warranties. And these babies have got a 25-year warranty. 25 years. Okay, eat that. Okay, like um, Bart Simpson used to say, was it Bart? Eat my shorts. Was that him? Okay, anyway, um, guys, I want to show you something here. So when we're talking about growing your own, um, look what we picked out of the garden this morning. Look at this here. Okay, look at this. Look at these herb bunches. Come in close here, mate. Show them. I mean, this is wonderful. We've got beautiful rosemary. Oh, the smell, the smell, the smell. We've got some columna basil. Now, you'll see this is different, hey? Huh? Columna basil, smaller leaves, okay? Matte, not as glossy as the sweet basil. Columna basil grows throughout the season. 
Whereas sweet basil, you won't find sweet basil right now for the love of money. It's like hen's teeth because it hates growing in winter. All right, and here is that beautiful red basil. These are the things that you need to be picking and enjoying. Um, and what do we do with this bad boy? Well, if you've watched my TV programs, if you've read about it in Grow to Eat magazine, you'll know that this stripped like that is one of the best society sticks in the world. It will never catch fire on your braai. I promise you it won't. Because, <laughs> and you use your secateurs to make a sharp end there. Nice sharp end, see that? And then you put on your sticky flace and your pineapple and whatever, and you pop this on the bra, and you've got the all, all the beautiful um, oils that are coming out through your your rosemary and into your meat, so it's actually basting it, giving it those beautiful flavors. And what did it cost you? Nothing, all right? Also, one of the greatest bra cleaners, take it like that, make a little broom, Okay, make a broom and then rub it on top of the bra grid. Okay, but anyway, okay, I'm getting on our, about the bra. I think I'm having chop and dop tonight because that sounds like a fun idea. Let's go back to the veggies. Um, but I'm going to answer a question quickly. Let's have a look here. Where's the questions? Um, okay, uh, Jeanette. Uh, hi, Tanya. I've sown seeds, but I don't know when to transplant out. That's a very good question. So, Jeanette, as soon as... The seeds have germinated and they get to about five to seven centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to use this as an example. I'm going to go back to this, the Swiss chard. Okay, this is too big. You should have transplanted by then. And as you can see, they're in the little four packs. So it should have been smaller. So we say as soon as your first true four, two to four leaves. Does that make sense? So it's going to germinate, it's going to make the two leaves, okay? Then the next set are going to come out. As soon as you get those, then you transplant. And when you transplant, folks, this is how you're going to do it. Come in close here so I can show you. This is what I want you to do. You take the one little leaf, all right? Take one leaf. You hold it like that. You're not going to grab it by the stem because that stem is so delicate. It's, it's so, so delicate. You're going to take it. And then you're going to use a little gardening implement, whether you're going to use your little trowel, um, whether you're going to use this little guy over here, or whether you're even just going to use a pencil. That's how you're going to dig it out, okay? Um, so you'll pop it out like that, hold it by it, hold it by its leaf, and then you're going to transplant it, holding it by its leaf, not by its stem. Pop it into its spot, firm it down. Best way to firm it down, use the back end of a trowel, Okay, back end of a trowel, firming it down, letting it go, and Bob's your uncle, da staan hy reg op, okay, and he is ready to go, and then of course, a really good watering. Okay, where was I? I'm jumping all over the place today, um, but yeah, this is really exciting. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay, next question. Um, my mint is not doing great, it's in the shade. Doo -doo. Okay, what type of weather does it need? Okay. Um, Polani, very important, mint comes from where? Where does mint come from? Anybody getting it right? From the back there? No. Anybody getting it right? Where does mint come from? Mint comes from the Mediterranean. When you think about the Mediterranean, what do you think about? Blue seas, little breezes. Ah, yachts, really bad soil, lots of sunshine. Okay, isn't that telling you? Mint needs lots of sun. Mint can grow in a half day sun in a shaded position. What happens is it starts getting very tall and leggy. But folks, mint right now should be sleeping, all right? Mint should be looking terrible in most gardens, especially if you're in the colder parts of South Africa. Its leaves go brownish. If you haven't pruned it, it's got a few sticks up here with like very few leaves. And those leaves that are on it normally have got brown patches and, and so on. It's going to look miserable because it's meant to look miserable right now. Everybody doesn't have perfect hair days. Nah, you know, you all don't have them. You all end up with a bad hair day, just like plants. They all need a bit of time to go to sleep. So what I'm going to suggest that you do, give your mint a good pruning, 
really good pruning. Take um, a bit of compost and then sprinkle a little bit of compost on top of it. Give it a good feeding. And when we talk about feeding, I'm going to talk about giving it some multi-grow. Give it some nutri feed, okay? Either one of these guys and it'll spring back into action. Don't be too quick to do that though because plants need a rest. They do need a rest. Okay, I hope that answers your question. But personally, I would move the mint out. Remember, mint is excitable. If you're going to plant your mint in the garden, I suggest you plant it in a plastic pot and then you bury the plastic pot in the garden bed. Because mint is like a seven-year-old that hasn't had its Ritalin. All right? It is wild, wild and uncontrollable. Um, so really important because mint will kill your whole garden. If you let mint go, it will eat everything up. It will smother everything. Um, it's very excitable. Very, very excitable. Um, so put it in a pot and bury that pot so that you can control it. Okay? And then what I would do every now and then, if this is your pot, let's pretend that this is my pot of mint. Okay? There it is. There's my pot of mint that's now in the garden bed. What I would do, get your secretaire and literally just go around and just prune like that because the roots are going to go over. Okay, so then you just give it a pruning. Those that are left here, pull them out. Your main plant, your mother plant is left in the pot looking good. And away you go. And that way it's not going to get that excitable. All right, let's check on the next question. Oh, Yvonne, my lettuce always tastes bitter. Hi, Bowena. Okay, right. Let's get this right. So, um, first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about, I want to tell you this. This morning, picked out the veggie garden. Isn't she gorgeous? You know, sometimes they're so pretty, you don't actually want to even break them up. Um, this is a beautiful frilly lettuce. Um, we planted them probably about four weeks ago from little seedlings. Yeah, four weeks ago. Really yummy. Um, there are three or four households that eat off this veggie garden. Um, I pulled them out this morning because I really, I wanted to show you how beautiful it is. And I guess I am having salad tonight with my chop and dop because I can't let this go to waste. Um, but the beautiful thing about the new hybrid lettuce or lettai, lettuce eye, what do you call them? I don't know. Is that, you know, one lettuce, look at this. You are going to get so many beautiful leaves off it. So many gorgeous leaves. And if you didn't need to pick the whole thing, what we do is... We keep removing leaves from the outside. The more you move, remove leaves from the outside, the more they grow from the inside. Okay? And those are called perpetual lettuce. And most of the lettuce varieties that we find either in trays, um, even like this little guy, all of these are the perpetual lettuce. So this is a little oak leaf here. You pick from the outside. This is a little cos. Oh, and cos is yummy. Cos is a yummy, yummy lettuce. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice and controlled. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I suggest that you do, let's get back to why they are bitter. But before that, I want to give you an example. I want to explain something to you. So six lettuce plants. You're probably going to pay about 40 rand. Let's take 40 rand. Some of you pay less. Lucky you. If it's 40 rand for a tray, that works out too about six rand fifty per plant. So I have invested six rand fifty in this cost lettuce. One lettuce is going to last me and my garden, its cycle is normally three months. Okay, so three months before it starts tasting bitter. Okay, are you listening? So as you're picking the leaves around the outside, so it's just going to continue. But it starts getting bitter when the plant gets stressed out. If there have been really hot days and it's lost moisture. When it's not been fed enough. Okay, so I'm going to come back to that. We're still talking about this lettuce. That's 6 rond 50. My lettuce lasts for three months. If I divide that back, if I divide it back and work out to what my investment was for one lettuce, which is going to give my family leaves for three months, I'm coming in at seven cents a day. Ha! Huh. Are you kidding me? You can't even buy a chappy for that. You can't. Seven cents a day, and if you plant enough, and if you have a few combos, 
Ha ha ha! What have we got? My own special pack, just like they sell at the shop that begins with the W. Look at it. Oh, Mace, come and have a look here. This was picked this morning. I've got some crisp lettuce here. I've got some sorrel, all right. Um, how much would you pay for this? Oh, I've got some mustard. Mustard, mustard, yummy mustard. See, beautiful, yummy, yummy mustard. Mace, I'm gonna open this up on the deck here so you can have a look at it. I mean, this is just, this just blows my mind because this packet that was picked from the veggie garden this morning, we would normally pay at the shops 25 rand, 20 rand for one of these. You use a handful of the leaves and the rest you get put into that, one of those drawers in your fridge and turns into a science experiment. True story. Some of you pick it out of the packet and there's even slime, like a juicy stuff pouring out of it. Seven cents per lettuce plant. Come on. That is like insane. So there you have it, nice and simple. So we're going to come back to, the question was, why is my lettuce bitter? You must mulch, please. Any veggies that you're growing, like this little guy. In the veggie garden, we've got straw. So we've got Martha and George, the chickens. When we clean out the cages, the straw from there gets put around here. If you don't have a Martha and George, you can still put straw around it, okay? You can put straw, you can put leaves, you can put crushed leaves, those that you've put into, <coughs> excuse me, into the shredder. You can easily do that. Oh, excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. I'm eating too many leaves. <coughs> and then the other thing is, so what was it? Mulch, leaves, bark chips, grass, um, and of course your homemade compost. So, oh, I think I need to eat more leaves. I've still got a frog. Okay. Right. Feeding. I spoke about feeding. When you're mulching, you don't need to worry so much about the plant losing moisture because that is very, very important. <coughs> One thing about Facebook Live, they can't cut when you've got a frog in your throat. Okay, but never mind. Moving along. I hope that answers your question. Also remember, if your lettuce has been in the ground for more than three months, they are going to get bitter because the plant is only a perennial. It only goes for that long. Okay, so really, really important to think about that. Okay, Jolene is saying, um, uh, where does time grow best? Mine is battling. Time, folks, I mean, look at this time here. We saw that in here. Um, time loves sun. Time is also Mediterranean herb. It loves growing in the full sun. The other thing is, folks, if you've got time plants, don't only have one. You need at least three or four because if you're like me and you every time you're frying onions, you are throwing in a sprig or two of thyme. I mean, when I'm picking and I am cooking, I am taking like that much, okay, to go with the onions. And then um, I tell the family that um, I've been cooking under the trees today, so please watch out for the big stalks. Time enjoys this regular pruning. It really does because it encourages new growth. But if your time is in a semi-shady spot, if it's not in a well-drained soil, it's going to battle. Right, so give it a good feeding. Work it up, get it some strength, which is really important, and plant a few more. So that if you're pruning a lot, you can jump from one plant to the next so that you can ease the burden and the stress on the plants. Okay, right, Cindy, um, I have a large tree next to my vegetable patch. And when I plant, the plants take long to grow, even when I put compost on the patch and the patch gets enough sun. Okay, right. Cindy, I am very sure that when you dig and when you're planting and you've got your garden fork and you're turning that soil, I'm very sure that you're coming across some roots of that tree. Remember, roots of the tree are going to take away all that nutrition. And compost alone is not enough. Um, especially for leafy greens where we want a lot of nitrogen. Remember, green leaves, we need nitrogen, okay? So it's important that we feed them up. Um, leafy greens, and also just on your sowing intervals, I just want to touch on this very, very quickly. The worst thing we can also do um, when we are sowing seed 
is to sew the entire packet of spinach at once. <laughs> I know some of you have done it. I know you have. And you had like a million baby spinach coming up and you're like, okay, family, we're eating spinach for the next six months. Um, folks, please do it in intervals. So here's a general rule of thumb. You want to sow small amounts of leafy greens every two weeks. Legumes, okay, so those are with the root. Um, with those, you want to sow every four weeks. And so you want to sow little bits so you have that succession. So as the one is growing and maturing, kneeling, nearing the end, you've got the next batch that's coming through. It's consistent, okay? It's not like, so, boof, here it is, I'm done, okay? Because your family is going to want to divorce you. They're going to be very tired of eating every type of spinach that there is a spinach dish in the world. Um, so, so in succession. I want to come back to the tree. The tree is all about the roots, okay, and the roots that are sucking the nutrition um, out from these, out from your veg. So, please, give it a feeding. Make sure you're using either multi-grow, use something like that. Please, use Vita Veg. It's an organic product. It works brilliantly. Use Bio Ocean, all right? This is chicken litter. Use this in your prepping. So, use these, these organic fertilizers when you're prepping your bed. Okay, so you've added in your compost, you're going to add in a good few handfuls of either your Vita Veg or your Bio Ocean, and then when they are growing, okay, when they're growing, then you're going to feed with some multi-grow, um, multi and you can also use some nutri-feed. So, guys, it's food. We've got to supply the food, and when you've got a big tree, and you've got a little plant like this, who's going to win? Mm, you answered that one. All right. Um, Linky, um, I'm having a problem with powdery mildew, sprayed some milky water, but I don't know if it's working. No, 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 that, that ain't going to work. Um, now, I know that we are all very, very worried um, about when we're spraying anything, especially on edibles, and I hear you and I get it. Um, you don't want to spray something on your lettuce and then eat it the next day because you might grow another ear. Um, but the very interesting thing is that when we buy our packets of lettuce and Whatever we're buying actually from the shop, we don't question it, do we? No, we don't. Interesting that, huh? We should question more. Ask more questions. Um, so, powdery mildew. Use Disease Pro. Disease Pro works brilliantly. It's a ho-ho that you spray on, okay? Especially if you've got cucumbers, if you've got... <clears throat> Um, pumpkins, uh, tomatoes, powdery mildew loves them. All you do is take one little sachet, okay, there are three sachets in here, one little sachet, dilute this into one liter water, pss, 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 spray it on, basically you are inoculating the plant. This is going to grow on the leaves, you can't see it, okay, it's going to grow on the leaves and it eats powdery mildew for breakfast. Beautiful, all right, and the great thing is you can pick and eat the same day. All right, so there's no, no worrying about what it's going to do to me, what it's going to do to my family. If the dog eats that entire sachet, its bark isn't going to change. It's going to remain the same delinquent. It's not going to die. You won't die, and your family will be fine. Um, and exactly the same with the products that I've just spoken about. And that makes me feel really good. Okay, Dawn. Good morning from Michigan, United States. Well, howdy. Is that the right word? Okay, aren't you going into like elections and something? Vote for the right man. I was watching something the other night on, on CNN. Crawly things. Ah, oh, yes, crawly things. A laugh out loud. I'm CJ Pillay. <laughs> Hello, CJ. Um, well, I, it's good to know your name. Um, I love gardening with my mum. I'm 13 years old. And I'm a passionate animal lover. Oh, mwah, mwah, shout out to you. And I hope you are growing lots and lots of gorgeous green edible things. And, if, you know, don't grow Brussels sprouts if you don't want to eat them. True story. Okay. Don't grow them because uh, no matter how much cheese sauce you put on them, they still taste like Brussels sprouts. 
So stick to things that you really enjoy, like beetroot, which you can roast and get that beautiful caramelized on the outside or leeks from your garden that you've added into your, lo into your winter stew or used as a braise with beautiful thyme that you picked from your garden that makes the basis with carrots to one of the best, best stocks in the world. Man, I'm getting hungry because I get so excited about this stuff. <laughs> Um, one more question here. Um, oh, I've heard so much about companion planting. Lauren, you're absolutely right. Thank you for reminding me. There are certain do's and don'ts in, in veggie gardening. And um, I was very, very silly not to mention companion planting. So things that don't like each other, okay? So like, you know when you put some in-laws together or the in-law with somebody else and you know, you know, you don't even invite them to parties because they're like, wah! It's like to a red rag, to a bull. So there are certain people that you don't invite to your party. There's certain veg that you don't plant together. Like we know that you should plant basil with tomatoes. Why? Because it enhances the flavor of the tomatoes. They smell really good and oh my word, I picked these today. Fried green tomatoes coming up. Lovely. And the smell. Have you smelt the difference between a tomato that you have grown and a tomato on the shelf? It just doesn't have that smell. This is like, this is insane. This takes me right back to my childhood. Um, my dad used to grow tomatoes. You know, when the Roma tomato just came on the shelf, it was a big thing. Um, and this, yo, it takes me back. Um, but anyway, so uh, what was I talking about? I lost track completely now. What was I talking about? Oh, companion plants, that I was talking about. <laughs> and for instance, you don't, so we spoke about basil and tomato. You don't plant basil next to cucumber. They don't like each other. So they're things that work and that don't work. And if you want to know about those folks, I uh, honestly suggest without, with an impartial view, completely get your latest copy of the Gardener magazine. Folks, look at this shining beauty. And this is enough to brighten up anybody's spirits in winter. Um, and whether you've got COVID blues, um, or whether you've just got winter blues, this is our July issue of the Garden and Detainee. And look what we've got. Veggie garden design article. We have got different veggie gardens that you can style, that you can work with. They are really nice and easy. We've got some great tips, how to get planning, putting your pen to paper, and interestingly enough, talking about companions, do's and don'ts, all about rosemary, and maybe giving a try at sowing some seed. Folks, it's all in here. Please go to your local shop and get it. If you want to know which shops are selling the gardener or detainee, please pop onto our website. That's www.thegardener. And there's a list there of the shops and garden centers um, that are selling our magazine. If not, just pop us an email to info at the gardener if you want to know ahead of time. And we'll tell you exactly where you can get your copy. Um, this is a beautiful magazine. I am very, very proud of it. And I'm very proud of my team that put it together every single month. And um, we've even got the word sexy on the front cover. Talk about moving my cheese. Guys, um, let's see if there are any other questions, but we're starting to wrap up. Remember, ah, and just two things. Before I start wrapping up, a really, really big shout out to Gardena. Um, thank you guys. Uh, you are one of the best. Um, you really are. And that's why we like using them um, because they don't break. Um, I am not going to have the spring disappear into my neighbor's garden. Um, they're comfortable. They work well. The dog can't even destroy it. True story. Um, with your little balcony kit, it's a winner. Um, and there are a lot of new exciting products that are coming through from Gardena. And I think Gardena's motto used to be, and I'm going back now, um, often copied, um, what was it? Often copied, never matched. That was years ago, and I'm talking years and years ago. Um, so yeah, you, you, pay for, you, you pay for what you get. Um, you get what you pay for. Anyway, guys, thank you very much to Gardena. A huge shout out as well to Stark Airs. Thank you guys, Seeds of Success. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, folks, 
get out there and support these guys. Um, they're the ones that are making these shows possible for you at home. Um, and uh, we are really eternally grateful to all of them. Um, please remember that if I haven't answered your question, we will be answering it later. This afternoon, um, I will get onto the computer and I will answer every single one of your questions. Um, Guys, all that's left to say is thank you so much for being with me today. Um, thank you to the crew in the background. And uh, I hope that you are, have got itchy fingers. And I hope that you're going to be rushing out and finding that packet of seed that's been hidden in that drawer. And that you're going to go and sow it. Okay, sow it. What have you got to lose? Absolutely nothing. Um, get your veggies in. Enjoy the harvest. Um, God bless you all. I'll see you next week. Take care of you and yours. And most importantly, happy gardening. Cheers, guys. Tanya Fisser Live was proudly brought to you by Stark Airs, Seeds of Success. Gardena, passion every season. And TanyaFisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Calling all green fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.